right, so the first uh, lesson in the polynomials is um, so like going over the kind of the characteristics of polynomial functions. OK, so uh, polynomials are classified according to their degree. So high degree is the highest power of X. OK, so actually you're probably wondering what are polynomials or perhaps you already know what they are, but uh, basically polynomials. Let me just kind of scroll down here. Um, to maybe a more complicated one here is when you have these uh, like Y equals and then the X, the X variables are kind of like um, are being raised to powers. All right. I don't know if that's <laughs> technically sounds uh, let's, uh doesn't sound too technical, I guess. But um, yeah, so if you have Y equals X to the fourth plus five X cubed plus five. So you have like a constant a variable and an exponent. OK, so um, so you see here these so you see the same kind of thing where they where they, the the uh, X are um, the variables, okay, and, but they're being raised to uh, exponents. OK, so um, what are we going to do first here? I kind of put this this lesson together. This uh, there's in terms of um, I guess like uh, solving or anything like that. Uh, this lesson here is not li really like that. It's more just kind of going over the characteristics of polynomial functions. OK, so uh, the first thing here again, the polynomials are classified according to their degree. Okay, and the degree is the highest power of the X. All right, so the first one here, this is actually a polynomial, OK? Y equals 4. And this is called the constant function because this is degree 0. OK, so this is technically a polynomial. Uh, the reason for that is, um, again, Y equals 4 is the same as Y equals 4 times X to the 0 power. Okay, So these are equivalent um, because anything to the 0 power is 1. OK, and 4 times 1 is 4. OK, so you can imagine these constant this constant um, polynomial, uh, or sorry, this constant function as a polynomial, all right, uh, because it technically it can be written as four times x to the zero power. Okay, so the highest power of x here is zero, but we don't bother right now. Okay, so anyways, the constant function of degree zero, uh, so uh, are those of degree zero. Okay, so the graph looks like this, where it's kind of like a flat line, right? Y equals four. You guys know that this is a horizontal line at four. OK, so. Um, yeah, and actually maybe I'll explain why that works. Uh, let's just take all the points that are actually on this line. Let's just take a few here, like these points here. Um, for instance, this point here is uh, negative five. Four. this point here is uh, what's that, three, four. And this point here is eight. Four. OK, so what you'll notice is that for all the points on this line, the y coordinate is always four. So if you took all the points with a y coordinate of four, what it'll do is it'll create a horizontal line. Okay. So that's um, yeah. So that's the reason why this graph looks like this. Okay. So y equals four is a horizontal line at four because all the points that are on this on this horizontal line have a y coordinate of four. Okay. So what we're going to be doing here is uh, again we're just going to be going up by degrees and we're just going to be taking out the graphs and then at the end of it we can draw some conclusions based or how the um, how do I say how the graphs are related to the equations. All right, all right. So the first one here again, constant function is a degree zero. Um, now the other thing we want to look at when it comes to graphs is domain and range. Okay, so you look here, the domain of this graph. All right, the x values is all real numbers. Right, so we can imagine that actually technically that uh, yeah we could draw in arrows on both sides. Okay, so the domain in this case is all real numbers. Uh, please forgive me, it's been a while since uh, I've uh, written on this tablet, but anyway, it's all real numbers. Now the range in this case is at just the only y value, right? If I ran a scanner up and down, the only place where there is a function is actually technically right at four. So the range in this case is y equals four. Okay, there's uh, there's no function for anywhere else in terms of y. Okay, so, um, so in this case, the range here is y equals four, same as the actual function itself. All right, so that's a constant function. What you notice is that it's kind of flat. All right, so next one here, you did a little bit of work in this math 10, I believe. Um, this next is of degree one. Okay, so notice that x here is to the first power. That's the highest power of x here. So y equals 2x plus 3. Uh, you guys have drilled in your heads that, you know, the y equals mx plus b thing. All right, so we get, uh, basically, we don't get a flat line, but we have a uh, line with a slope to it. Okay, so this is the graph of y equals 2x plus 3. 
Um, and again, it's called a linear function. It's degree one. OK, and again, let's look at the domain. The domain in this case, again, if I want left or right, is all real numbers. All right, because these um, graphs here, they go on forever. OK, so I know what I did is here. I actually. Um, let's write this down here. Go to this area. Um, what I did is I punched these into decimals and kind of cut and paste them onto this on this uh, Word document. OK, but anyways, uh, these like you know that both ends the, this line does go on forever. OK, so domain here, if I went to left to right, will always be well, there was always going to be a function as well. If I go up and down for the range, there's also uh, always going to be a function. So the range in this case. Is also all. Real. Numbers. Um, all right, what else? Next up, quadratics. OK, so quadratics, you did in math 11, a whole bunch of these. So I just kind of punched in this uh, this quadrat here. So highest power of x is 2, right? And you can see here that, uh, again, the domain is all real numbers. However, the range here now, um, since this is a parabola, it goes up and it comes back down. So the maximum here is at, it looks like it's going to be at nine. Okay, so um, in this case, the range here is y is less than or equal to positive nine. All right. Okay, so these um, first three, you've actually worked with quite a bit right, in your math, uh, math education so far. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at um, when we go up with higher degrees. OK, so the next one is called a cubic function. And these are of degree three. So the highest power of X is three. What you notice here is that uh, one tail goes up. And one tail goes down. And so here the domain. Again, is all real numbers. And the range in this case, right? If I ran a scanner up and down, there's also all real numbers. All right, cool. Um, all right, next up here, quartic functions of degree four. So I came up with this one here. Um, and yeah, it was, uh, again, the highest power of X here is four. Uh, you notice that, um, again, the domain, I go left to right. Um, so this may be a little bit misleading, but uh, this line. Want to draw here. All right, so. Yeah, so I'm going to just draw these arrows up, add them in there. Um, OK, so this when it comes to this, it might be a little bit less misleading. You might think that this thing just goes straight up, but it actually does go to the left. So go to the left and the right forever, right? but very slightly, but it does go on forever. OK, so the domain in this case, again, is all real numbers. And the range, OK, so the range in this case is actually going to depend on how low it goes, right? Since both of these tails go up, uh, this is, looks like it's at negative seven. All right, so I'm just going to call it negative seven. So the range here is y is greater than or equal to negative seven. Okay, um, actually going back to the domain, since it's all real numbers for x, um, what it also means is that uh, if the domain is all real numbers, that means you can plug in any number for x and you'll always get a y value. Okay, and you, that makes sense, right? With these things here, there's no like restrictions or anything. Right for X, I can plug in any number, however big or small it is. Like I, for X, I can plug in a million. It's going to turn out to be in a really big number, but I'm still going to get a number. Okay, so you can plug in any number for X. That's why the domain is all the numbers. Okay, you're not going to. There's no restrictions on what kind of numbers you can plug in for X. All right, any number you can plug in for X, you'll always get a Y value. All right. Now the fifth one here, degree five. These are called quintics, and again. Uh, what you'll see is the domain. Oh, and again, sorry, this arrow, this this tail looks like it goes straight up, but it actually does. Again. Go up forever, but it also goes to the right forever. And likewise, on the bottom end here. It does go down forever, but it does go to the left forever because again, you can plug in any number here for X. You'll always get a Y value. OK, so again, the domain here. Is all real. Numbers. And the range is also all real numbers. OK, 
Okay, so the reason the range is all real numbers again is because one tail goes up, one tail goes down, right? And you'll always have a function. All right, okay, so these are just the graphs. There's a couple um, uh, kind of um, how do you say, uh, relationships that we, or observations that we can see that uh, from just the equation itself, all right? Where we can draw some conclusions. So that's, I've actually just listed them here. All right, so, but I'm gonna go up, go through them, each and every one of these observations. So these are all kind of key points. Okay, so the first one here is that the domain of all polynomial functions is all real numbers, right? Because again, you notice here all real numbers, all real numbers, all real numbers, and so on. The reason for that is you can plug in any number for x, you'll always get a y value, all right? There's no restrictions on x. All right, I just keep scrolling up, uh, up and down here. The next one, next observation is that the range of odd degree polynomials is all real numbers. Okay, so what it means by odd degree is again odd numbers, right? So if the degree is an odd number, then the range or the range itself will be all real numbers. All right, so for instance here, this is degree five, right? It's odd. The reason for that is it goes one tail goes up and one tail goes down. All right. Um, and likewise, if I scroll to the cubic, again one tail goes up, one tail goes down. And linear degree one, one tail goes up, one tail goes down. Okay, so that's why, again, the range for odd degree polynomials is all real numbers. All right. Uh, the next one, the range of even degree polynomials depends on the absolute maximum or minimum. All right. So in other words, both tails go in the same direction. Okay. So let's look at that here. Um, so again, this this is degree four. You'll notice that both tails go up. All right, and it will depend. The range itself depends on what they call the absolute minimum. In this case, since these two arrows go up, the range is going to be until there's a like a, a floor. All right. Likewise, with a quadratic here, degree two, again both these tails go down forever. All right, but the maximum here, the range is y is less than or equal to nine because the absolute maximum for this parabola is positive nine. Okay, so if when it comes to even degree polynomials, the range will depend on this maximum or minimum. All right. Um, next up, maximum number of possible x intercepts is equal to the degree of the polynomial. All right. And same with this one here, maximum number of directions is equal to the degree of po the polynomial. Okay. So this one here, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time kind of explaining. All right. Um, so let's scroll this back. Uh, and we'll start with degree one, actually. All right, so degree one, what you'll notice is this is a straight line. So the graph itself just goes in one direction, right? Well, one down, one up, but there's no curves to it, right? It's just one straight line, right? Degree two, notice that it goes up, but then it goes back down. Okay, so again, it goes up and it goes back down. So it's going in two directions, up and then down. Degree three, notice it goes down, up, and then down. So that's three directions. Degree four, one, two, three, four, right? Down, up, down, up, four directions. Degree five, all right? Up, down, up, down, up, all right? So five directions. All right, now a couple things I wanna point out. Um, notice that it does say, uh, uh, first off, the maximum number of possible X intercepts. Okay, so notice here for this one here, degree five, we actually have one, two, three, four, five X intercepts here. But what could possibly happen is like we can come up with a fifth degree polynomial where it goes up, right? It goes down through there, up through there. But let's say here, instead of going all the way down, it is possible to have a polynomial that kind of comes to here and then goes back up. So if that was the case, then it'd be three, right? Three X intercepts. Um, so that's the key thing is that it's the maximum possible number of directions, maximum possible number of X intercepts. Because sometimes it's actually not going to, like you could curve up here. So it may not actually go through the uh, x-axis, right? But it could, like fifth degree ones could possibly at, um, go through the x-intercepts. I'm not sure if I did a good job explaining that, but anyways, it depends on the number of maximum possible directions. Um, now, the other thing I want to point out is, again, it's the maximum number of direct, maximum number of, actually, let's take impossible directions here. Um, so this is kind of key too, because let me just pull up Desmos here, All right? Let's just look at y equals x uh, to the fourth power. 
not square. Fourth top. All right, so this is y equals x to the fourth. What you notice is that it goes down, and it goes back up. All right, um, it does not go in four directions. It only goes in two directions. Okay, so it is possible. Again, it, our cort cortex fourth degree polynomials can go in four directions, but some of them actually just go in two directions. Okay, so um, so that's kind of the key thing here is that it's the maximum possible directions. Okay? So not all fourth degree polynomials will go in four directions. Some will just go in two, right? And likewise, not all fifth degree polynomials go in five directions. Some may go in three. Okay, so that's important to to, to um, notice is that it is just the possible maximum possible, but not always. All right, next up, the constant term, right, without any variable. So the term without any variable, let's just go without any x, is the y-intercept. Okay, so the constant term in this case is the y-intercept. So looking here, we'll just look at this uh, fifth degree one. The constant term here is 12, right? So one number without an x. And what you notice is that it is, it is the uh, y-intercept. Okay, so here it will actually cross at 12. Uh, the reason for that is, Again, if you remember how to find the y-intercept is you plug in 0 for x. So I plugged in 0 for x here. This term would turn to 0. This would be 0 to the 4 times 3, which is still 0, 0, 0, 0. So when you plug in 0 for x, the only thing that's left over is actually the 12. All right, so your, your y-intercept for all polynomials is the constant term because uh, when you plug in 0 for x, all the other terms go away. I'll just keep scrolling up here. So here, negative six right, is the constant term. Notice that it does cross that negative six here. And positive two, cross that positive two, y-intercept, positive seven, constant term, y-intercept is positive seven. All right, so, and again, uh, you guys were taught this y equals mx plus b. Again, the constant term three is your y-intercept. Okay, so for all polynomials, your constant term is always going to be your y-intercept. All right, now the last thing we've got to point out is something called the end behavior. Now, the end behavior depends on the leading coefficient. All right, so if you have a positive leading coefficient, right tail goes up, negative leading coefficient, right tail goes down. All right, so what that means is, let me just scroll to these graphs. The uh, first thing you got to know is what is the leading coefficient? Okay, so leading coefficient is the number in front of the highest power of x. Okay, so we'll start with, actually, you know what? Let's just go to the fifth one here. Um, Let's go to degree five. Okay, so notice here that the leading co positive, or sorry, the leading coefficient for this equation here is actually positive one. So it's positive. So that means my right tail is going to go up. My end, that's what they call the end behavior. Okay, um, the reason for that is x x gets larger and larger. What ends up happening is since this this is uh, like the highest degree, highest exponent, this term starts. As x gets larger and larger, this term actually dominates, starts to dominate the other terms. So if it's positive out in front, then you're going to have a really big positive number. So that means your right tail goes up. All right, uh, let me just scroll up to this one again. Positive one is my leading coefficient. Notice my right tail goes up. Uh, negative one for this one is my leading coefficient. Notice that my right tail goes down. Okay, so what it means by end behavior is like the right tail. Okay, so as x gets larger, so this is a negative. Leading coefficient, notice that my right tail goes down. Negative leading coefficient here, right tail goes down. Positive leading coefficient, right tail goes up. Okay. And uh, yeah, the, well, the constant term is kind of like a special polynomial in this. All right, so um, yeah, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. So this is, these are just kind of examples of graphs of polynomials. These are the observations or conclusions that um, should be able to drive right by looking at these graphs. All right, cool. So that's it. That's the lesson.